Local 7 and 103.7 WTIB present Talk of the Town with Henry Hinton. News, sports, and community information and everything that's going on around town. Now, with Talk of the Town, here's your host, Henry Hinton. Talk of the Town, here we go. It is uh, Friday morning, Talk of the Town. Kind of a dreary, cloudy, misty Friday morning, but we're nice and cozy and warm inside and the hot light is on because we're at Krispy Kreme Donuts. Welcome in, everybody. It is great to be here. Henry Hinton with you on Friday morning. We've got uh, Trent McGee. Good morning, McGee. Good morning. Good morning. McGee on sports. And from WITN this morning, the general manager of WITN, Mark Gentner, the G-Man. How are you, my man? I'm good. Good, good morning. Good to see you. Thank you for being here this morning. You we bet. are live at uh, Krispy Kreme this morning. And, uh, of course, uh, it's one of our favorite spots to be. So we want you to come out. We're giving away free donuts this morning. The, uh, the donut offering today is a triple chocolate donut. How about that? Triple chocolate donut. And uh, here's, the, here's the way they do the donut. They, uh, they have a dark chocolate cream filled uh, filling in the middle topped with milk chocolate icing and then many chocolate chips mm. and white chocolate drizzle for crying out loud. Just saying that. And if you come in this morning before 9 o'clock, which means you got 54 minutes to get here, and say you're listening to Talk of the Town this morning, you will get one for free. So we'd love to have you come uh, do that. Also, uh, they're highlighting the caramel cho- mocha latte this morning. Espresso blended with caramel chocolate syrup topped with whipped icing, whipped cream, and caramel drizzle. Served hot or frozen, a perfect treat when the temperatures are hot or warm or cold. So come and uh, be part of the show this morning. Be a part of what we're doing here and uh, be here at uh, Krispy Kreme. Weather's going to improve. It's not very good this morning. It's actually very dreary out here. You know, it, it, Amanda Tilly loves it. This is donut and coffee weather. Absolutely. <laughs> it's not very good golfing weather, McGee. It's no, gotta, it's not. It's got to improve. No, it's not. I'm glad golf's underway now. You know, the, the Hyundai Championship Tournament of Champions got underway on Thursday. So uh, I'm glad that's back, but you're right. We can't Hawaii. play much golf. Hawaii. They usually start in Hawaii? Yep. And, you know, Will McKenzie normally does pretty well in those Hawaii tournaments this time yeah. of year, doesn't he? He's not playing in this, but uh, well, he, he won't he, do well he, in this he, one. He, he normally <laughs> does early in the year. But uh, Patrick Reed leads the field. Jordan Spieth is one shot behind. Bubba Watson's right up there. So a good field. It's a strong field for sure. I wonder why Willie Mack's not in this one because he, he usually loves to go out there this and is the term, This is the Tournament of Champions. So, um, so you got to have one one I think you year. have to have a win or you know, have finished uh, at a you gotcha. know, certain spot to, to qualify for it. Gotcha. Well, they, they usually stay in Hawaii the first two or three yeah. weeks, right? Yeah. So yeah. Maybe he'll get in next week. Uh, basketball this weekend. Pir- Lady Pirates got a win last night. They got Finally. Off Schneid. Finally. Beat yeah. UCF. They beat, yeah. uh, and as a conference win, too. That's a good win. Uh, what's up? What's on tap this weekend? Pirates are at Temple tomorrow night. Is that right? Uh, yes, seven o'clock there, uh, and you have North Carolina Syracuse. And that, is that that game? I believe is on ESPN News again, isn't it? Uh, I'll check that. I'm not. I'm not sure if that's. I think it is on TV for sure. I'm not exactly sure what channel it is. But yeah, the Pirates are looking for their first conference win of the season. And so you have that, and you have ACC basketball, North Carolina Syracuse, and then a wild card weekend football: um, Green Bay, Washington, uh, Minnesota, Seattle. Kansas City. Got my Chiefs playing Houston so, yeah. tomorrow for Big weekend, big sports weekend. By the way, uh, I was saying, we were talking about how the team played, how the Pirates played at Tulsa the other night, and I made a comment that, you know, maybe we should – they, they apparently were really kind of jet-lagged from what I was told was an 11-hour trip to Tulsa. Wow. And they got out there and then they Jeez. played like that. And I made the comment on the show yesterday, uh, hey, well, maybe we ought to be chartering for these guys if we're going to be playing these good teams. I quickly was corrected. Apparently, our basketball team does now charter most of the time. Uh, So why was it 11 hours? Well, it has something to do with the fact that the kids were – we're on uh, vacation and coming from different areas or something. I, I, I don't, you know, I didn't get the whole story. I'm not a hundred percent sure, or it may have been when they all had returned back here. I, I don't know, but uh, the, for some reason they did not charter to uh, to Tulsa, and uh, it showed. Regardless, eleven <laughs> hours is a long, a whole long know, trip. I, and and uh, you know, again, I, we talked about that article in the newspaper yesterday. A lot of negative stuff out there about uh, about. Uh, uh, Jeff Lebo, I, you know, I, I, for the life of me, I can't get it. What happens when this team goes on the road? 
because they have moments when they're playing in Menji's Coliseum that they look un- – I mean, two games ago when they played South Carolina State, and I know that's a different level of competition, but still shooting is shooting. Right, I was about to say. They, they couldn't miss. But then they got out to Tulsa the other night, and they couldn't make anything even under the basket. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, you, you know, you have those nights, and, and Jeff Lebo had one of them, or I should say his basketball team, against Tulsa. But you're right. I mean, when they're shooting well, they play good basketball, and they have to shoot it well to stay in games. I mean, that's going to be what makes them competitive, you know, to keep them in a game against SMU or UConn or even a Temple tomorrow night. They're going to have to shoot it well. I'm firmly behind Jeff Lebo. I get very upset when I'm reading these snarky comments on Twitter. Uh, a friend of a mutual friend of yours and mine has angered me pretty badly about that recently. Well, yeah. And or, I've, uh, I've did you read I've, the bless your hearts this morning? No. I actually, I actually took the time to do that, and there were two bless your hearts about Jeff Lebo and Heather Macy, two separate ones. You know, negative. Uh, See, one, I, one I hate was, that bless your heart thing. I know, and I, I, tip, I typically oh, never read it. What's reflector? Them. I'm calling you. I'm calling you out on it. Anonymous comments to say what you want and take no responsibility. So, what is that all about? What is that all about? You ought to be able to. You ought to require them to put their name on there. If you're going to say, if you're going to say something negative about somebody, come out and say it, and then sign it. That's yeah. what I say. One was negative. One was, you know, just saying, "Hey, just keep doing what you're doing." So, you know, it's one thing to have like comments on a website, but to feature this as part of one of your top parts of your newspaper. That you can you can criticize somebody and take no responsibility for it. What is that? What is that? Come on, shouldn't be able to do that. All right, uh, I'm very excited about our uh, guest coming up in a few minutes. Uh, I've known this guy a long, long time. I mentioned earlier this morning that uh, Javier Castillo Jr. has become one of the top interpreters. He's got a. He, uh, he, we're just talking about this. Uh, his company. And interprets all different languages um, internationally. Javier has become one of the one of the go-to guys for government officials, State Department. He has uh, routinely uh, interpreted for the State Department, Hillary Clinton, and others. When heads of state come in and um, there's a language uh, need, Javier will come in and and actually do the interpreting. And Javier grew up right here in Greenville. He's become very successful, got a very successful company that does this internationally. And, uh, you know, it's, it's another one of those things that's right here under your nose you don't know that's here. Yeah. And so uh, I've been trying to uh, – I, I ran into Javier, and I said, hey, I want to get you to come on. And he's, he's here this morning. Uh, he, started, uh, he started doing medical interpretation while at ECU working at Pitt Community, uh, a Pitt, uh, Pitt County Memorial Hospital working in labor and delivery and shock trauma on weekends. Uh, you know, while his friends were down at the bars, uh, Javier was over there in the emergency room and in the birthing center uh, interpreting for doctors uh, with, with uh, people who were having medical problems or having a baby. Isn't that kind of cool? It is. It is. So, uh, so Javier's here. We're going to talk to him about some of his experiences uh, coming up in a few minutes. Let's get a break in, and we'll come back. We'll get our news headlines in. Again, we're live at Krispy Kreme. If you come in this morning, I, see, I, here comes Glenn Bowen. I knew if I said something about semi-automatic weapons that I think Glenn Bowen would show up. <laughs> I knew you'd show up this morning. I'm going to give you equal time. I'm going to give you equal <laughs> I, I've already re- I've already retracted my comments. I've already retracted my comments. Uh, we were talking about semi-automatic weapons this morning, and I, I didn't say I was opposed to them. I said I don't get them. Isn't that what I said? Yep. A- and then uh, – Quickly, I got uh, corrected by saying if you do away with semi-automatic weapons, you're doing away with revolvers. I didn't know that. So, anyway, I should have known Glenn would show up. 14 after 8, we're live at Krispy Kreme. Come on down and uh, be part of the program this morning. Meet Javier Castillo. Have a donut. We're giving away triple chocolate donuts just for coming in and saying you're listening this morning. 14 after 8, we will be back with more Talk of the Town. Stay with us. All right, back on Talk of the Town. It is uh, 18 after 8 o'clock. Time for some news headlines here this morning. And then uh, got our interview with Javier Castillo coming up. And then we're going to talk to Glenn Bowen, who was not scheduled, but I'm glad he's here because we're talking about all this gun control stuff. Glenn, you'll like this this email that I just got. I'd call in if I could. We're not taking calls this morning because we're on location. The idea of restricting or banning military-style firearms in large amounts of ammo 
is exactly why the Second Amendment exists. We have a right to the type of weapons that would be useful if government turns on the people or if rule of law breaks down. Both of these are rare situations that have, but have arisen in the past. I enjoy your show, and you do the region a real service in terms of supporting conservative principles, except for the Second Amendment. We need to get you up to speed on this issue. <laughs> Thank you, Ken. I appreciate that. I want to clarify what I said. <laughs> he's, he's back what can I say, Mark? I, we, we were just talking about the comments that uh, that that Kyle, what's his name? Chris, uh, Kyle. Chris Kyle. Chris Kyle's wife made to Obama yesterday. T- Taylor Kyle, right? I and and uh, and then we got into the conversation about uh, uh, Whoopi Goldberg's comments uh, to Rand Paul yesterday on television about automatic weapons, and he straightened her out and said, "There, you know, we don't, you can't sell automatic weapons, but you can't sell semi-automatic weapons." And, and I said, I, I really don't understand. I don't really get auto, uh, what people use semi-automatic weapons for. And then uh, Colt Page, who owns Colt's Guns, well, who is involved in Colt's Guns, along with this gentleman <laughs> to my left. I think I know who really owns it. But <laughs> uh, so, you know, if you, if you outlaw semi-automatic weapons, you also outlaw revolver. I didn't know that. So I'm going to give, uh, so I, you know, come on, don't beat me up. Don't, just give me a little space here, and I'll let Glenn talk in a minute. And you're entitled to an opinion, right? Yeah, well, and, you know, I didn't quite understand it that way either. 20 minutes after Bless eight, your heart. I haven't, gotten into the, uh, <laughs> Bless your heart. I haven't gotten into the gun control thing like I probably should have. All right, here is our update from WITN, our local news update, live from Krispy Kreme with Mark Gentner. Good morning, Mark. Good morning, Henry. Good morning, everyone. New Bern is helping customers save money on their energy bills in a new community outreach program. The New Bern Utility Office is signing up customers for a free energy audit that helps residents break down their energy bill. They're also sending a professional out to customers' homes to figure out different ways they can save money based on how they are using the appliances in their house. Officials with the city say this is a way to give back to the community that can be really helpful to their customers, especially with recent cold weather. For those who can't schedule a visit with an energy auditor, the City Utilities Office also has an online form so customers can perform their own audit. Two checks, each $1,950, has been sent to the Moorhead City Police Chief in the past two days, and they were both fake. Chief Burnett Morris says they were addressed to her and sent to the police station. Her detectives are now trying to catch the scammer. Morris says, in quote, that goes to show you if they're going to send the Chief of Police a fraudulent check, they just don't care. So be aware and know that it could... Fr- uh, happened to anyone, end quote. The so-called company that sent the check was from one state, the check itself was mailed from another state, and the company phone number was f- from yet another state. Detectives say sometimes you can tell the check is fake just by researching the company on the internet. They say before you take action, ask yourself why the person or place sending the check is giving you money, and then go from there. They say if it's too good to be true, it probably is. If you do get a check and don't know it's fake and you cash or deposit it, the bank will make the funds available to you, but once it's determined to be fake, you are responsible for paying the money back. Phase 1 of the Town Common Revival Greenville kicks off on Tuesday. Greenville City planners hope with the input of residents to tweak plans for improving parking, sidewalks to accommodate the disabled, an inclusive playground, and boat ramp improvement, among other things. The town common is more than 20 acres of grass and trees framed by the Tar River. There's an amphitheater for entertainment, but that's about all. Greenville planners say it could be the central park of Greenville, and residents hope the city can make it happen. The open house on Phase 1 is scheduled for Tuesday at 6 p.m. at the 3rd Street Community Center. You can give your ideas at that time as well. I've got an update to the breaking news story earlier today on a, on a shooting in Pitt County. A man was shot earlier today in Pitt County after getting a knock on the door, according to authorities. Pitt County Sheriff's Office spokesperson Christy Wallace says a man was shot multiple times at 604 Keith Drive just off of Barris Construction Road around 1.20 a.m. Sergeant Joseph Neal says the victim was taken to Biden Medical Center and went into surgery. Wallace says someone knocked on the victim's door and when asked who was there, a gunman started firing. The man was shot multiple times through the door. Wallace says deputies are questioning a possible suspect. And that's your WITN News Update. Back to you, Henry. All right, very good. Let's check our weather update now. With that, here is Trent McGee. All right, Henry, for today, you're looking at uh, highs around 58 degrees, partly cloudy skies. Showers expected later today. For your Saturday, a high of 62 with a chance of showers. 
for uh, for Saturday. 65 for the high on Sunday with lows in the upper 30s. And looking ahead to Monday, chillier temperatures with a high of just 49 degrees and lows in the upper 20s. All right, that is our news and weather update of service this hour of Potash Corporora. And uh, as you may know, safety practices at Potash Corporora eliminate hazards and promote a strong safety culture. culture. Programs like their exposure-based safety process help reach important safety milestones. For example, in March of last year, employees went one year without a lost time incident. That's an all-important part of the Potash Corporora mission to ensure a safe work environment for all of their employees. Potash Corporora, helping nature provide. All right, 24 after. Mark, thank you for being here. Good to see you. Good to see you. Appreciate you being here. Coming up, our interview with Javier Castillo, the uh, internationally known uh, interpreter who makes his home right here in Greenville. He's done a lot of interpreting across the world. We'll talk to him next. Be right back. Again, we're still giving away those uh, triple chocolate donuts. Coming this morning, say you're listening, you'll get a free one. Good to have everybody here. I'm excited about having uh, my old friend Javier Castillo Jr. here. Uh, Javier grew up in Greenville, still makes his home here, but has become one of the most sought-after people in the country when it comes to being a language interpreter. He's president and founder of Castillo Language Services. He has been uh, doing interpreting uh, all over the world. He um, he has he has uh, designed and taught courses at uh, the University of North Carolina Law School on interpreting, and uh, he has interpreted at the highest levels of government. Javier, how are you? I'm doing great this morning. Good Thanks, to see man. you. Good to see you, hey, too. Uh, you know, let's talk about how you got involved in this. Uh, we, I said earlier, you were back when a lot of your uh, your college buddies at ECU were downtown party, and you were over at uh, Pitt County Memorial Hospital interpreting for uh for people who were who, who might have had a medical problem with doctors and things like that. Is that how it all started for you? That's exactly how it started. I was a junior in college here at ECU. I was studying management in Spanish, and I wanted to do international business. And I was looking for a part-time job. And first I heard they needed interpreters at the hospital. Um, I met a guy who was leaving. There was a staff position open. And he said, hey, would you like to come uh, work as an interpreter? Sure, I speak English, I speak Spanish. I thought I could be an interpreter. Um, I went in, interviewed, and, and got the job and started working weekend nights at the hospital. Right around the same time, I heard they needed interpreters at the courthouse. And so I walked into the public defender's office and I said, hi, I hear you guys need interpreters. The young lady behind the desk looked at me and said, yes, um, do you speak Spanish? Well, yes, I do. Well, great, we have a case on Thursday. Go to this courtroom <laughs> and meet this attorney. And just like that, I began working as a professional court interpreter. It wasn't much of a background check, was it? <laughs> was not, at that time, no. At that time, no. Um, and so that was my uh, the last two years of college when I wasn't that's, in that's class. That's really interesting. So you were in the courtroom a couple of days later. That's exactly Playing right. a huge role in a court, in a trial. It's scary. Yeah. Absolutely scary. <laughs> yeah. uh, thankfully, those days have changed, and, and yeah. there's uh, certification exams uh, that yeah. you have to become a certified interpreter to work in the courts. Yeah, interesting. You know, it's funny how you know you wouldn't think that this would become um, a little bit of a cottage industry as a result of the influx of, uh, of uh, Spanish-speaking people, but it's such a huge population now. I imagine it's. Uh, Business is pretty good. Business is good. Business is steady. We uh, yeah. work with a wide range of clients. Anybody who has either employees or clients uh, that don't speak the other language or anybody they're trying to market to in another country, they don't speak the same language, yeah. we provide that service. We help bridge that gap. So so you, you do the uh, Spanish interpretation. I do. But you have other people in your company now that do other languages. That's correct. Yeah. Uh, how many people? Um, it really depends on the... The, the languages and the types of and the needs right. that we have. I've got a team of a team of interpreters across the country uh, that we can so, work on. So you, they work for you kind of as contractors. That's correct. Yeah, That's correct. You. So oh. you place them where they're needed, that kind of deal. Exactly. Depending on what language needs to be interpreted. I know that you've gotten involved uh, at the highest levels of the federal government. Uh, I, I know that you've uh, been in the room and interpreted for Hillary Clinton and other people like that. Talk about some of your experiences. How do you get that kind of work? I guess uh, you have to have a reputation to get at that level. Well, reputation and I guess the skills and, yeah. and the ability. I um, Back when I was just a fledgling interpreter, uh, I 
wanted to become a certified court interpreter. That was my end all be all. Mm -hmm. So I, one day I could work in Pitt County Court as a certified interpreter. And so I went and took every training course that I possibly could, anything to become a professional interpreter because I knew that I wasn't quite qualified enough to be doing what I was thrust into. Yeah. Uh, I went to a training course out in Arizona. It was a three week course for federal court interpreters. I was put in an advanced group because I've been studying so much because I want to become you know, a state court certified interpreter. When I was there, I met a man by the name of Mark Fallow, who worked for the State Department. We were put in an advanced group. Fowler? Uh, Mark Fallow, F-A-L-L-O-W. Okay. I, I thought maybe it was the former chairman of the FCC, Mark Fowler, but that's a different guy. Different guy, yeah. different guy. And uh, after spending three weeks together, he invited me. He said, Javier, you need to come to Washington, D.C. and take the exam and work with us at the State Department. Uh, a few weeks later, I, a few months later, uh, I went up there and took the exam and then, boom, started working with the State Department. So I went from... Pitt County Memorial Hospital to State Department in about two years <laughs> as an interpreter and been doing that since 2002 and have had just an incredible uh, time. I've had so you're still interpreting for the State Department? I do. I'm a contractor for yeah. the State Department. Yeah. Now, now, what's it like to be in the room with, uh, say, John Kerry or, or Hillary Clinton and uh, you've got some head of state from some, uh, some other country in there. Do you get nervous when all that's going on? To be honest, I know you sent me a picture of you uh, interpreting for Hillary Clinton here recently. That was uh, back in 2011. There was a, um, an event. We, I was hired to interpret for a, group of, a delegation from Latin America that had come up, and they were being honored for their work in human trafficking, stopping human trafficking. Right. Um, and Hillary Clinton was giving a speech in honoring these, uh, these visitors. To be honest, uh, you know, being in the presence of, of, of heads of state or, or secretaries it isn't that daunting. It's what's more daunting is making sure you can do the job and keep up with the terminology and the speed and the professionals yeah. and not lose your cool when the lights are on, when the camera's in front of you. Yeah. It's one thing to be interpreting, you know, in a, a doctor's offices or in a uh, lawyer's office where there's a more relaxed atmosphere. The lawyer just wants to get to know and, and understand. Mm -hmm. Uh, level of precision has to be there, but right. there are no cameras. There's no lights. There's nobody recording you. There's not, you know, right. no international incidents yeah. are going to happen yeah. if you, you know, yeah. make a huge mistake. <laughs> Have you made mistakes? All the time. <laughs> uh, all the time. Um, so, 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 I mean, I, I, you know, languages, you know, words mean something different in different languages. And so sometimes you, do you ever get yourself into a little sticky situation? Absolutely. Uh, you know, it's not just uh, the language itself, right, yeah. that you're interpreting, but the, the subject knowledge that you have to have of each field that you're interpreting in. So there's a yeah. lot of study, a lot of preparation that comes in uh, interpreting. Um, and, of, of course, there are slang words in, in countries that, that are okay, and then they're vulgar in another language. Right. Um, you have so to change it. You have to change it. You've got to realize, that, oh, that doesn't quite... Cause, cause, Sound cause, like cause, what you were trying to say. Because Hillary just insulted this guy, exactly. but she doesn't but she know. Did it. A, she did it with a smile. That's, that's correct. That's correct. So, you know, part of being uh, a, a good interpreter is recognizing when you've made a mistake and quickly yeah. trying to correct it and fix it. Right. Yeah. Have you ever, you know, sometimes you see these interviews like on 60 Minutes where you've got an interpreter. You ever been involved in one of those or anything? Not live. Not, yeah. uh, not anything on the national scene. Right. How about some how, what, tell us some interesting stories of things that have happened while you've been interpreting? I bet you got some of those. So I've had some interesting experiences over the years. Um, you know, a few a few years ago. Um, well, like I'm in so so many different fields. I get the uh, exposure, right? Um, we started off uh, talking about when I was uh, just a medical interpreter at Pitt County yeah. Hospital. My friends were. 11 o'clock at night, they're at 519, and I'm in labor and delivery with a woman grabbing on me, screaming for dear life. You know, that yeah, was my yeah. first experience. And that, yeah. that's really awesome. That's so you're I'm, in the room and somebody's having a baby? I'm, I'm in the room when they're having the baby. I'm in shock trauma when they come in with, uh, you know, bullet, bullet wounds. And, oh, man. Um, it's it, being in a courtroom or being in, you know, in a jail, interviewing, uh, you know, witnesses. I have the opportunity to see a side that most people don't get to see. You don't get to stand at the head of operating table unless you're a surgeon or a nurse. Right. Um, but I was blessed to be in, and see that world uh, as an interpreter. With the, uh, the State Department, we've done a lot of military trainings. Um, and so I've had the opportunity to work on VIP protection, uh, post-blast investigations at uh, FLETC, Georgia. I've worked in uh, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and Albuquerque, New Mexico with weapons of mass destruction 
Um, we've done trainings for the uh, Secret Service that protects presidents of Latin America on you know, evasive driving techniques, uh, learning how to uh, control armored vehicles, uh, learning to shoot AR-15 wow. assault rifles. How about that? Speaking of right, weapons, uh, this morning is a running theme. How about, uh, I'm looking at your bio, you uh, routinely interpret for senators and congressmen? That's correct. Uh, any interesting stories there? Do, uh, they, do they treat you well when you're, when you, or do they treat you like you're not even there? Maybe you want to be treated that way. I don't know. Um, so it depends on the uh, the situation, right? Yeah. Um, ideally, when we're working, at interpreting, yeah. our goal is to be invisible, right? Yeah. We're not there to be in the forefront, but rather to help make a connection between two people. Right. Um, my work with the State Department, for example, this is where I would have the opportunity to work with the senators and, and congressmen, politicians from Latin America. The work is twofold. Uh, one, we are... We receive a group of a delegation, maybe 15 visitors, uh, like, like my last group uh, back in October. Uh, we traveled for three weeks. We were in D.C., Portland, Oregon, uh, Memphis, or Des Moines, and Albuquerque. And so our role is to act as hosts and we welcome visitors to the airport. We, we give them tours of the city. We help them navigate. But when we're actually doing the meetings, we're actually interpreting, they're we disappear, and we're just there to help make the connection between whoever they're meeting with. Right. And so during that time, of course, they're, we're, we're just there as a facilitator of communication, mm -hmm. a language conduit, so to speak. Outside the meetings, you know, we, we become friends. And so I we've had you. a great right. opportunity uh, back when Spain won the World Cup. Yeah. Uh, I was going to ask you about back. sports, McGee, because I know you've also, not just not soccer, but you've also uh, interpreted for some of the Major League Baseball teams. With, with some of the young players that have come in, right? That's correct. We, um, <laughs> again, this was another State Department job where they invited a group of uh, at-risk youth, uh, young ball, ball players from Venezuela and Cent uh, Central America, and they came up and gave them um, uh, you know, lessons on leadership and, and trying to get these kids out of tough situations through baseball. And they had a chance to meet with the uh, sports uh, Orioles and a couple of teams down in uh, Florida for spring training and we got you know batting practice with them and, and coaching techniques and uh, it, it was just a great experience you know from a courtroom to uh, the baseball diamond they give you a, any batting tips? Jail. I did I did um, I'm awful they told me to stick to interpreting <laughs> All right, Javier Castillo Jr. and uh, his company here in Greenville, Castillo. Language Services. Language Services. And uh, interesting interesting career. You've made a career out of that. Been and ha blessed. Having known you growing up, I'm not surprised that you're successful at it. You're one of the best in the country from what I've been told. So congratulations. I appreciate that. Nice to see you. Thank you for Thanks having me. Thanks for coming in. Have a donut on me, a triple chocolate donut. Will do. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Javier. That was interesting. All right, let's get a break in. We're coming back. More talk of the town on the way. Uh, my buddy Glenn Bowen's going to come in and give us a little um, little uh, background on what's happening with gun control. We've got to get Amanda back in here. We've got more coming up. Stay with us. McGee will have sports. 20 minutes now to get here to get a tri triple chocolate donut or to get a, uh, a sample this morning of uh, the caramel latte. So come on in. We'll be here till 9 o'clock. We'll be right back after this. All right, welcome back. Thanks to Javier Castillo for being here this morning. We're live at Krispy Kreme. Got sports coming up. But right now, Amanda Tilly, our host, is here. Good morning. She's giving away donuts again this morning. That's we got right. the triple chocolate donut we're giving away. How's it going? Yes, it's going well. Going yeah. well. A lot of folks coming in. Glenn Bowen had three, I think. Hey, <laughs> if you're a chocolate lover, this triple chocolate is hard to beat. It is a, it is a great donut. And uh, there's also some sampling going on of the uh, one of the lattes. What's That's that right. Other? Our caramel latte uh, is being yeah. sampled this morning, so you can come by and, and check that out and see, see what you think. Now, is the triple chocolate, uh, we got some up here. That's right. Is this the is this a, a, a limited time product? It's a limited it? time offer. We'll have it through the 24th of January, uh, and then on the 25th we roll out Valentine's. Yeah, so. we'll be back here uh for Valentine's, yep. which is always a big event here. It is, at, thank uh, goodness. Christmas. But I see you've also got the football donuts out, too. Is that in honor of the playoffs? 
it, it is. We just and we just have the football donuts on the weekends, yeah. but but still have yeah. a lot of people having having gatherings. And have so, the Panthers nearly broken you this year? They haven't, but they have certainly challenged <laughs> us. We have been stretched. <laughs> when Krispy Kreme did the the deal with the uh, Carolina Panthers, that you could come in after a win and get a was it a dozen for three dollars? It, it's the Monday after the Panthers right. win, you get a dozen glaze for three ninety nine. Three ninety nine. Uh, you, you probably didn't realize that they were going to win 15 games. We did not. We did not. <laughs> is that deal going to be off of the playoffs? It is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you get the weekend off because they get a bye this weekend. Right. But, uh, but then they're back uh, playing next weekend. That's so. right. All right, what else is going on? Uh, for us, it's just an, another reminder that this is a great time for fundraising. If, if you're getting back into school, thinking about how you're going to raise funds for uniforms or church youth trips, I uh, just want to remind you that we've got a great program and can help you raise some money fast and easily. All right, very good. Well, thanks for having Thank us so this much. morning. It's nice to see you. All right, eight forty-five. We're going to uh, we're going to have McGee with sports here in a minute. But uh, with all this uh, gun talk this week of uh, President Obama's executive action, we got our local gun expert here from Colts Gun and Paul. You can see uh, you can see Glenn Bowen and Colt and the guys on the Colts uh, uh, Gun Talk program on Thursdays at six, I believe. Right? How you doing? Well, Doing good, Glenn, Glenn Bowen. This man, this man knows more about guns than anybody in Pitt County. <laughs> you know, my telephone started ringing this morning. You know, it said Glenn said I thought that uh, Hinton was one of our people, and I found out he's one of them. <laughs> I said, I said, what you talking you about? You can't say anything without <laughs> shaking up the whole world. I've gotten four emails this morning. We were having a conversation about Obama's uh, interaction with uh, Chris Cowell's wife yesterday. And I was talking about how she tripped him up and he didn't have a teleprompter. And then we got into Rand Paul being on The View and something that Whoopi Goldberg said about automatic weapons, which, you know, she was wrong. She meant semi-automatic. And, and I just made the comment, I didn't get semi-automatic weapons. I didn't say I was for banning them. I never said that. <laughs> I, let's call this gentleman back in here and let him inter- interpret what you said. <laughs> I, I believe what they tell people to call me. <laughs> what they say? I said. I, I just said. said I said you you were against it. Uh, I didn't say. McGee, weapons. you were sitting here. Did I say that we should ban semi-automatic weapons? No, he didn't, he didn't I say did that not for say that. <laughs> I did not say that. Anyway, but, so but it, it, you know. So, you but, talk, but, talk. but then Colt emailed me and said that would include revolvers. No, no, it, that, it, he, he he's mistaken on that. that oh boy, that, here we go. No, no, no. no it, that would in, include. Uh, people carrying handguns but uh the federal government determined two different guns they could they revolver and a, and uh, a pistol a pistol includes an automatic a semi-automatic weapon right now do you know the difference in a semi-automatic and an automatic yes what is it well uh, an automatic weapon sprays bullets you can hold the trigger and it'll spray bullets it just Sem- continues you. It loads right. itself Sem- and fires Sem- Semi-automatic. Itself. You just you have to pull the trigger, but you right. don't have to reload or cock anything. You right. just, yeah. Look, I'm not a gun novice. I've been around guns all my but life. But you know, I'm for gun control. Yeah. If you don't have good control, you miss the target. <laughs> 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 all right. So now, uh, Obama's uh, wants the background. You don't have any problem with background checks, right? No, I'm not. I, I mean, I agree, I, I, that I part. With, I think they need to. But what get, do we do about people who want to buy guns? A guy wants to sell his neighbor a gun. What do you do about that? I mean, should that require a background check? Well, the guy that the guy that sells his neighbor a gun, if it's a pistol in North Carolina, his neighbor has got to go get a permit first before he can buy the gun from the guy. Right. So there's going to be a background check. No. Uh, yeah, 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 sure. You can't yeah. get a permit without that, a background But that's, check. that's not on long guns. That's only on handguns. So if I sell a rifle to my neighbor, you don't have to do that. But, but, but see, if you don't check him out and find out that if, whether he's a felon or not, then you can be charged with selling a gun to a felony. Right. Felon. See what I'm talking about? So everybody that's got a gun, if they want to sell it, they need to check the person out isn't thoroughly. It, isn't it ironic that most of what Obama wants to institute is already in place in, Cal- exact, in, already exactly. in, place in California, the, the, and it didn't stop what happened the, in San Bernardino? It, 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 the, the laws is on the books. They just haven't been enforced. Like on the jailbird, every morning I look at the jailbirds, and I see people in there, uh, felons that have firearms, and they charge with it, 
but they never be convicted in court. I can't understand yeah. that. Yeah. So, so what do you think of this executive order? I think it's stupid. You know. Yeah. Is it gonna, he is it he hasn't come up with is anything it change new. Anything? He no, and they keep talking about the gun show loophole. There is no loophole at a gun show. The dealers at a gun show have to do the same thing I have to do in my store. They can't sell a gun to somebody that just walks up. Now, North Carolina is one of the few states you have to have a permit from the sheriff's office. Right. Or a concealed to carry permit to, to, to purchase a handgun. So is that is that a uniform law across the country? Does every state have a, a law that you have to have? A permit at a gun show. Why is he no, making such a big deal no, out of no, gun no, shows? But, but it, they don't have to have a permit in other states, but they have to. Have, they call in. They have to do the next check. They call in the FBI. You know, they right. get a background check on the person. So, so is there any part of this executive order that you agree with? Uh, no, 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 no none, none of it. I, I agree with. The background checks, you the, said. The back, it's already in the book. We already it's got a, background checks. already check. got background checks. Right, yeah. Yeah. Well, it's probably made business over at Colt's Guns pretty yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, it's been fantastic. fantastic. <laughs> I bet it has. <laughs> He's done me good. I was going to say, Obama's been the best thing ever have for your business. And I, I, Hillary's <laughs> going to include it, too. You think she's going to get elected? No, heck no, she ain't going to be elected. <laughs> and I was very disappointed to hear know. you just say, talk about Donald Trump. Now, he's my man. The, the, you, the, a couple of weeks ago, you Why were talking. Why am I not surprised? <laughs> he, Donald Trump is the only person that's talking 99% of what he says is the same way I feel. But you think he can do any of it? I don't. It, it, he says he can. I know he says he can. Okay. <laughs> but but, but, but it, you, you don't get that much money without doing well, did he you hear, did it. You, without, did, you, did you hear what I said this morning about the survey that's out that says that if Donald Trump is the nominee, that 40% of the African-American voters will vote for him? Yeah, I don't, and 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 a very high percentage too. I don't have it in front of me, but a high percentage of Hispanics. I should ask uh, Javier about this. Yeah, I think uh, it, a high I, percentage of, of of Hispanics too. And I'm trying to figure out. <laughs> he, the, the, he talks the, negative about women, and women love him. He talks yeah, negative about Hispanics, and now Hispanics. When, are, when, when is he talk negative about women? Oh my God. He picks out one or two. I know some one or two that. <laughs> don't, says, don't, don't say anything else. Yeah, You're going right. to get yourself in trouble just like him. And your family's going to shoot me for having you up here. <laughs> I don't know where you were going, but I'm glad we didn't get there. <laughs> no, he just picks one or two women that he goes, he doesn't like, and that, you know. Yeah. He, there's some men he doesn't like. Well, there's no doubt about that. No <laughs> doubt about that. Good to see you, man. Good to see you. I'm glad hey, business hey, is good. Hey, hey, yep. I like gun talk. <laughs> bye bye. I will. I will. I will get my facts straight on semi-automatics in the future. I won't ever make that mistake again. <laughs> All I said was I didn't understand why people wanted semi-automatic, <sighs> but I never said I wanted to ban them. All right, eight fifty-two. Let's uh, move on quickly. We got, we got sports. Yeah. Eight minutes in front of 9 o'clock and uh, eight more minutes for you to get in here and get a free chocolate, triple chocolate donut this morning at uh, Krispy Kreme. Here's McGee on sports. All right, the EC women last night snapped an eight-game losing skid, beating UCF 71-56. Jada Payne led four Pirates in double-figure scoring with 27 points. She also added 14 rebounds. Again, the win snapped an eight-game losing streak for ECU, their first American athletic conference win. The men in action tomorrow night on the road at Temple. 16th-ranked Louisville tapped NC State Thursday night, 77-72 in men's ACC basketball action. The Wolfpack cut Louisville's lead, 16-point uh, lead to three with less than four minutes to play, but the Cardinals held on for their 13th win of the season. State drops to 10-5 and overall, 0-2 in the ACC. Also in the American Conference last night, number 15 SMU rallied to beat Cincinnati 59-57 to remain undefeated, now 14-0 on the season. ECU has reportedly hired, although no formal announcement has been made yet, former Durham Hillside head football coach Antonio King as the Pirates' new running backs coach. King led Hillside to six Pac-6 Conference championships and won a North Carolina High School Athletic Association 
for a state championship. And the PGA Tour season underway, and Patrick Reed leads the field after round one of the Hyundai Championship. Reed opened with an 8-under 65. Jordan Spieth is one shot off the lead at 7-under. And NFL wild card action coming up this weekend. Of course, the Panthers don't play until the 17th. But coming up this weekend, tomorrow, Kansas City and Houston, 435, Pittsburgh and Cincinnati at 815. And on Sunday, what could be the coldest game in NFL history? Seattle and Minnesota at 105 and Green Bay and Washington get things underway at 440. All right, very good. It's uh, 855. It is five minutes in front of uh, nine o'clock. Um, <laughs> I'm getting a lot of interesting text. It says, you need a gun education, brother. I'm going to call you Whoopi Goldberg. No, don't do that. <laughs> uh, you know, yesterday I, I was uh, driving down uh, Farmville Boulevard. And I noticed that um, they are moving dirt to uh, start the new 10th Street connector. And I took, a, I stopped and Saw took that. a picture. Saw that. And I had no idea it was going to blow up. I put it on Facebook. I took a picture of the guys out there working on the new 10th Street connector. I said, finally moving dirt to make way for the Greenville connector from medical area to ECU. If you agree this should be named Leo Jenkins Boulevard, let the city council know it. We will all be driving on the Leo soon. You know, I wrote an article on Greenville Headlines uh, last year about yep. how I thought we should name this uh, the uh, Leo Jenkins Boulevard. That thing, I've got something like 205 five people have uh, liked it, and I don't something like uh, 30 comments on this. Really a lot of support for that. I hope that that is something that will catch fire in 2016. We can get that done. So we'll see what happens with that. Um, what do we got? We're about out of, out of time. You got anything for us? Uh, that's going to be a, a wet day today, I think. We're going to move out sometime tomorrow afternoon and hopefully be clear for Sunday. Sunday could be a potential golf day. 65 degrees for the high sunny skies. Rain moving out hopefully by that morning. So who knows? Who knows? Yeah, uh, 65 degrees. And uh, if we don't get too much more rain, but it's just so wet. It is. It's just been it so is. wet so. that you got to worry about that as well. So. Thanks to Amanda for having us this morning. Thank you, Amanda. Thank you. And uh, uh, get on down here and get some of these uh, donuts, the triple chocolate donut, the feature right now. And, uh, and we appreciate being here at uh, Krispy Kreme this morning. Back in the studio on Monday morning, thanks to uh, Michael and Ashton for getting us set up this morning. Thanks to Javier Castillo and uh, Glenn Bowen for being our guest. A lot of fun, as always, when we're here. Had, good to have Mark Gentner from WITN. Thanks to you. Have a great weekend, and we'll see you Monday on Talk of the Town.